if you caught John just then. He says, there's loads of people watching. Oh, I say, no, I know. <laughs> That's a welcome. I've gone all hot all of a sudden. Do you know what? I've been sitting in the garden. I don't know about you, but I've had a wonderful day sitting in the garden. Well, not all day. No, just for an hour. And uh, it's been absolutely marvellous. I'm going to have to zoom my camera in. You can see all my rubbish on my desk. <laughs> I'll get perhaps John to do that. No, the other one lost the side camera. Um, <laughs> yes, so hello to everybody. Um, welcome. Listen, I don't know about you, and I know I'm sure you've had a wonderful day in the sunshine, which is fab. And of course, we're still light outside, aren't we, here in the UK? And of course, the, the clocks went forward yesterday, didn't they? And how confused are we? I, well, I'm totally confused. Well, I'm confused most of the time. But um, it's, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's been a bit of a weird day, hasn't it? Because we've had sort of lunch at breakfast and breakfast at lunch and uh, sort of dinner at what was it like the afternoon tea time it's just like <laughs> it's just just a bit mad and I, the trouble is of course you see Millie the dog still thinks it's um obviously an hour before so she's getting fed at a peculiar time now well, I suppose it isn't. Maybe in dog, maybe in dog lives, they actually stay the same. But yeah, her tea would have been late, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> See? See how confused we are? And the poor little dog, she's down there. She's probably as confused as what I am. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to Making It Monday. Um, now then, um, Pat says it's her first Making It Monday Facebook Live. Oh, welcome, Pat. Um, hopefully we've got uh, the YouTube people up as well. Yeah, we've got YouTube people up as well. That's amazing. Hi to everybody on YouTube. I'm about to change my glasses. Um, so Denise is there from South Africa. Welcome. Um, we've got um, Kirsty. We've got Leslie. We've got Rosemary. We've got Mira. We've got loads of people watching already. We're up to 260 people. What's happening? And of course, that is Facebook Live and YouTube Live, which is amazing, isn't it? I, I love a bit of technology when it goes right. Um, oh, we've got a hi from a very windy north. The, the, the comments are coming through thick and fast here. Missouri. Um, we've got... Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Oh, I didn't quite catch that. Mrs. Suga or somewhere. I don't know where that is. That sounds a bit posh, doesn't it? Uh, mind you, I don't know about you, but when you look at places in Wales, their names, you think, oh, that sounds a bit foreign. Well, it's not. It's just in Wales, but the words are super. Um, anyway, anyway, um, making it Monday. Now, I've got a bit of, um, oh, it's windy in Iowa. You know what? It's, um, what is that? Sedez. Um, it's it's been a lovely day here in the UK. It's been the hottest day of the year so far. And for us, that's pretty special because <laughs> we never know where we are. By the weekend, it's going to be freezing again, which I don't understand. Why is it hot one day and freezing another when the sun is in the same position, giving us the same light and heat? I don't understand it. Somebody explain it to me. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so uh, welcome to Sally. She's not staying long. That's fine, Sally. You can watch it any time you like or you can catch it up on YouTube. Um, it's windy in Gloucestershire. My goodness me. It's cold here in Kent. Oh, I'm glad I'm not in Kent then because I think it's still warm outside. Anyway, um, so while you've all joined me, while we're all getting settled down for a half an hour or so stitching, I think it might take an hour. Um, yeah, it was just a case of having a quick natter with you. Um, and the, the uh, have, a, have a look at the comments. Have a, have, you have a scroll through the comments. There's so many about what everybody's been up to, about how it, oh, it's horrible in Belfast. Oh, I am sorry, Caroline, that's horrid. Um, oh, it's windy in Utah. Obviously, in the, in the States, it's obviously very windy because <laughs> we've had a few comments like that. So welcome to our YouTube followers and welcome to our Facebook followers. It's always lovely to have your company. I absolutely thoroughly enjoy it. Making it Mondays is, is possibly one of the highlights of my week. I daren't say is the highlight of my week because, of course, talking to my gold members on Thursday night on a Facebook Live is always the most important and very exciting day of the week. So, But Monday's come a really close second. I think I got out of that one nicely. And you'll have to forgive me if I look a bit hot because I've been sitting in the garden and I think I've caught the sun. <laughs> Note to self, keep off the blusher. Right. 
this week on Making It Monday, we have got Project 20, Peggy. Okay, and Peggy. Now, I want you to notice <clears throat> that the background on the front page of Peggy is a very, very lighter, lighter version of the original front cover. Um, I wanted to have it some sort of background. Whether it works or not, I don't know. But I want to explain something. These come to you on an email on a PDF, okay? You have to download them within a 30-day period, otherwise they've, they've disappeared in a cloud of dust. So get your 30 days, make sure you've downloaded it. If the pattern, this doesn't happen, this doesn't apply to Peggy, but let's just, oh, I can't even think back, but if any of the patterns, <coughs> excuse me, don't have a pattern piece, then just read this off your screen, okay? Just get the PDF up on your screen and read it from there. There is absolutely no need to print it. If you're a little bit worried about the amount of ink all of these patterns are going to cost you in money time, money and time, then just print, let me show you, just print those two bits. Hopefully you can see that. So just print those two bits, okay? So it's two pieces of paper, a little bit of black ink, and go on, spoil yourself, do it. Um, the rest of it, you can read off screen, off your PC, or, or any device that you can read something off of, okay? As long as it's clear to you, okay? I can't take responsibility if you've got a phone this size, all right? I just can't take responsibility for that. But I do my best. I do my best to make it absolutely fabulous for everybody so remember all of that you don't need to print it off unless it's pattern pieces if you read it from the screen on a pdf and then the pattern pieces two pages today just print those off you, your printers are very intelligent and they will only print out what you tell them to print so um, when it says print pages all you say no I want only print pages five and six or whatever it is. Anyway, hopefully that's cleared that up because we've had a couple of questions on that and I like to make sure we, we cover all bases. So let me just get my pattern in, in one place. I want to make sure that I can go by the pictures this week. The other thing is two, two or three more things, okay? Two or three more things. Um, the new patterns are launched every Friday around about midday, okay? And the only place... Well, sometimes I do make exceptions, but the only place I usually post is in the Making It Monday exclamation mark group. OK, Making It Monday exclamation mark group. OK, so if you want to search on Facebook, find it there. And that's where I tell everybody that the new patterns are launched. So you get first dibs on the Making It Monday group because you're my special people. You're my followers. So um, the other thing is in the promo code for the next five days, the promo code is free and you pop that into the promo code box or coupon box. I think it says promo code. You put the word free and that is free pattern for you for five days. I think that's plenty. I think that's plenty. After that, it's, it costs you a pound and a pound is nothing anyway. And I don't get any of that. Well, I get some of it, about half, just over half. Um, so so just so you know that that you've, it's time limited but it's five days now if you're in the us it's it equates to about one dollar sixty something along those lines so it's not horrendous it's quite a reasonable price for quite a good pattern okay so that's that um uh, oh and also if you post your pictures of your incredible beautiful makes on the making it monday group that's all we want to see. We don't want to see the bag you made last week or the children's outfit that you might have made um, this afternoon. Uh, as beautiful as they are, there's other places you can post them, not in the Making It Monday group. OK, that's just a bit of a nag from me. Sorry about that. But unless I say it, you won't know and you'll keep on doing it and we'll have to keep deleting them. And that's a shame because you don't know why you've been deleted. Not you, the, the picture. So this week is all about Peggy. She is adorable. The thing about a Making It Monday uh, project is that they tend to be really easy, quite small, quite dainty. Um, hopefully not too many difficult bits. Sometimes we put zips in, which I know some people find a little difficult. But generally speaking, they are nice, easy, 
just relaxing little stitching projects, which I know you all enjoy. I know you do because I've seen all your makes and they're fabulous. And when we're going to make Peggy now, um, there's a couple of little twists that I have seen in the Making It Monday group that somebody has suggested. and I think it's brilliant. So I will come to that when that's the appropriate time. OK, but that hold on for that wonderful bit of uh, inspirational advice from one of the members of the Making It Monday group. And I think that's super. So um, I've got my little poppy in there. Look, there we go. She's got my quilting clips and she sits really nicely in there. Um, and actually, I've got some spare feet for my other, oh, my little old banana here. And she, look, you can see that I think the pouch is there, isn't it? The poppy is there and that's got all my feet in. Um, so they're really useful, I've found. So this one is a hangy uppy. So look, you can hang it from um, a door handle, a doorknob. Um, I mean, you could hang it from your machine. Look, it'll hang from there. Hold on, it'll hang from, yeah, it actually hangs from the, the bobbin winder, which is around the corner. You can't see it, but obviously it's got to be safe. I don't want you to I don't want you breaking your machine by hanging this on there. Um, so the other thing is it's got a double pocket at the back. So it's one piece of fabric stitched down the center. And that's up to you whether you want to put that in or not. It's an optional extra. So it, it's there for you to use. And it's also that it's in the instructions as well. It's in the pictures you'll be able to see. So there we are. So that is Peggy and that's what we're going to make. And um, I have suggested quite strongly, let's put her somewhere. Where should we put her so you can see her? But I put her next to my machine. Oh, Millie's gone downstairs. There we go. Um, and I've forgotten what I was going to say. Oh, yes. Don't put wadding in it. Uh, I strongly suggest you don't put wadding in it because uh, the, because these are such small projects, um, the wadding would be quite, um, it would get, get in the way a little bit, be too, a little bit bulky. That's just my personal opinion. OK, do what you like. Um, but I've used an H, Vaseline H250, which is my go to stabiliser, them that know me know that I always use this stabiliser. It's brilliant. That's all that's got to be said about it. So what we've got is the little handle. We've got the base. I'm using a bit of kaif. We've got the outer. I'll talk about that shortly. Isn't that glorious? Mm -mm. Um, and then I've got the base for my lining, which is a lovely spotty colour from my daughter. And then that's the bit for the pocket. Let me get my pattern pieces out of the way. And this is the outer, OK, in the, in the spotty fabric. So that's what we're going to make up. So there's a couple of things to do, really preliminary stuff. And most of the time I'll, I'll have you on the side camera, but I'll keep going backwards and forwards. Um, so so welcome, everybody. Um, so from so from hello from M.O. in the USA, M.O., M.O., Missouri. No, is it? You'll have to tell me if I catch the um, if I catch the comment, I'll uh, I'll see if I can repeat that. Um, so that was from YouTube. And obviously, we've got loads of people from Facebook. We've got Wendy and Mira and uh, Helen as well. And Mandy and Jane. Lovely. Thank you. Welcome, all of you. It's absolutely super. So um, we're going to make up the handle first. We might as well. I'm going to switch my iron on. And it's a it's a handle on oh, Missouri. Oh, thank you, Nita. You see, had a bit of a guess. <laughs> so I'm going to put you on the side camera so you can see. But there's my handle. It's four inches. So we're going to fold the two long sides to the middle and fold again. It's pretty standard. But we want one of these short edges to be folded over a quarter of an inch. I'm pretty sure. Yep, I show that in the instructions. So we're fine. So I'm going to pop you over to the side camera. Let's just do that. So we've got it, uh, got it ready and and ready and raring to go. And you'll see my little picture in the corner. So I'll keep waving to you every now and again, and I'll come up for air shortly. So with our little piece there, you can first of all we'll, we'll fold it in half, give it a nice crease. So we've got that halfway point. Um, and I do this ever such a lot. It's pretty boring, really, because I keep doing the same thing. But then I think to myself, well, if it works, why would you change it? Why would you change it? So there we go. And we're folding it again. 
okay so that's given us our creases you can just about see what that looks like it pops up when it's when it's hot you could put some clips on that and it will hold it down but what we want to do is fold over one of these edges now I'm going to I'm going to do a bit of cheating here guys because I'm going to use my quilters tape which is just the best invention in the world and I'm kind of guessing that's far too much let me just show you I've been a little bit um, generous with myself let's cut it off and if you have a look I've put my quilters tape on the end and then you're just peeling away the backing and sometimes the backing wants to come away and sometimes you've got to sort of get in there and sometimes a pin helps to, to just get in there and separate the layers so there you go that's the, the glue that's left and all we're going to do is just fold that up like that and although do you see how that isn't caught there well you can you can catch it now I've just dropped my quilters tape oh here we are I need I need my quilters tape and you could put another little piece there to hold that down if you want to if you're really sort of pedantic about it let's just pop that there I'm just showing you what could be done you don't have to do any of this so there we are put another little layer inside my fold and then when I fold it back over it, it really does fold lovely and flat you can see how that looks okay so now I'm going to fold it in half again okay so that gives us a lovely lovely strong loop okay give it in a little iron um, because there's a lot of layers it's not going to in fact shall I keep that iron on just in case I might I can't remember if I need it or not again <laughs> so um, what we need to do now is mark it on the body of where it's going to go okay and it's two inches down from the top now if you look at the shape of it let's get it like that so you can see it it's got it should have a little flat top here okay so so that's that's the top <laughs> and you want to mark two inches down two inches down so Sheila says she's not seen quilters tape before it looks useful Sheila you haven't lived if you haven't got any quilters tape because it means you can install zips really really easily using your quilters tape I urge you to get some and Amazon has it no problem at all okay Amazon has it so what I've done is I've marked two inches down from the top and it's a wash away and it's ever so cheap and it's double sided and it's quarter inch there we go I've just remembered everything about it so two inches down from the top and I'm marking a line now I'm I'm fully understanding that you're not going to be able to see that line we well, might because obviously the color of my fabric but I can see it and that's all that matters so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my tab my hand or my strap um, right in the center I'm going to place it on that line uh, there's the line okay and that's where I'm going to I'm going to place it but right in the center oh, I keep dropping the tape because I do need it a little bit later on so let me oh crikey I think it's sticking to my jumper <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm uh, holding it on that line there and that's got to go right in the center if you don't, can't work out where the center is you should be able to because you've got this flat bit here fold this in half give yourself a little bit of a, a finger press and depending on your fabric it will depend on how easily you can see that and then that can go right down the center of that and it's dead easy dead easy but then you've got to top stitch that on first of all we've got to top stitch the two long edges and we'll do that now don't top stitch along there because we're going to do that when we attach it to Peggy okay so just coming back well yeah I'll come back to me just for a minute just to make it a little bit more interesting there we go um, and all we're going to do is I'm going to stitch who said wearing green was the best idea for when you've got a green piece of fabric <laughs> stitch from there to there and from there to there both sides about an eighth of an inch sixteenth of an inch somewhere like that not a quarter of an inch too big but don't go across the end because we're going to we're going to top stitch that part onto our peggy okay so let's just 
get going on that. Um, my stitch length is around two and a half, but you could increase it. Because it's a, um, a top stitch, basically, I'm going to do one back stitch, guys. That's all. Just the one back stitch. Because it, it, it's not, um, it's not some, a structural thing. So one stitch is enough just to contain the threads. Right, so up to the top and break your threads there. And then we've got a raw edge on one end. So let me just cut that bit. So that's my folded end there, and that's my raw edge there. And I'm going to now attach it to where I showed you just before on the side camera. And I'll show this to you when I've done it, okay? So hopefully, if you're making this along with me, you'll keep up. Sometimes it's difficult to keep up, I know that. But um, see how you get on. And the thing is, the Facebook Live is always on my page. And the YouTube, funnily enough, is always on YouTube. So it's just, I want to get this stitch coming down exactly on the top stitch line that I just did. So let's do that. And then I've just gone right down to the bottom. I'll show you when I've done. And then I'm going across. And then I'm coming back up. And I'm going to do one back stitch. That's all. I don't want a great bird's nest of, of threads. It's a bit wiggly. All right, so let's change that camera so I can show you. There we go. So that's what I've done. Basically, that is it. So not huge amounts. Let's just get that prepared. So not huge amounts. I've just done a little rectangle there just to hold that in place. And when you're doing the next part of your Peggy, you can, if you want to, just put, get this out of the way and pin it if you think it's going to get in your way. OK, but we've got enough space at the top that when we start stitching it all together, it should be fine. You know, when we're doing some other work with it. So that's your handle done. The next step would be to just pop it into the seam like that. And we can put a clip there because when we stitch the lining to the outer, we want to make sure we catch it in that top seam. You can see what that looks like. So I've just put a, popped a clip there so you can see. So it's out of the way, basically. So the next thing we need to do, and I'm going to follow this to ma make sure, sorry, lick my finger, to make sure that I'm going to do this exactly the same as you guys. So in the pattern, we then attach it to the body. So I'll bring it back in. <laughs> and you really need to find the center of your back and the center of your oval, okay? So if I bring that in so I can make sure that you see it. So what I'm going to do is fold my oval in half lengthwise. So if you look at the oval, you can see my crease. And so it's going to go across the bag like that or the pouch like that. OK, and I'm going to do a little mark here and a little mark there to make sure I know where that center is. So there's when we could call this the back. OK, and we can call this the front. And I think I've done that on the pattern. I can't remember, but I think I've written back and front. They're absolutely identical, but it stops you getting confused as to where you start and stop because I do things a little bit differently to what you think. Um, so that's where we're going to start stitching, actually, right in the center of the back. Now, this is where I need you to think about this alternative. And, and John hates it when I give an alternative. But in the pattern, and I'll get little Peggy back, in the pattern, you've got the seam going up the front. Now, Personally, that doesn't bother me at all, okay? But it might bother you, okay? It might bother you, but that's how, how I designed it. Okay, so the suggestion was, which is an excellent suggestion, is that you actually um, put the seam at the back, and especially with the, um, the back of the fabric, I'm gonna get my teeth straight in a minute, um, you can have your seam going down here instead of at the front. So you'll actually put this part on the fold and that way the front of your storage pod will not have a seam. So let me show you on the pattern. So on the pattern it says cut on the fold here. But if you cut on the fold here, 
you'll end up with um, a sort of a shape that comes out like this. So you, obviously you're going to have a double shape like that, okay? And the, this is the seam that will be joined together eventually. Now, I want you to have a think about it, and uh, perhaps somebody else can explain that better than me, but um, it means that you don't have a seam at the front of your bag. You can do the same with the lining, but you'll see the seam on the lining. So you could have the seam on the lining exactly where it already is. So I, I, that's complicating things which we don't need any complications, but it's a good idea that you have alternatives sometimes. So I've marked the center of the back of my body part like that okay so you can see the crease and i've put a little mark there and there's the back of my um oval base okay so we're going to do right sides to right sides now what i strongly suggest as well is that you just clip into this a little bit okay so we're going to just clip in well i'm not even going to say every quarter of an inch every half an inch and you're snipping in certainly no more than a quarter of an inch because that's your seam allowance um, but it helps it go around all the curves and if you do it all the way along it means that you don't have to think about it as you're stitching it's already done if you don't need it because you're on a straight bit well that's all right um, you can just ignore it. But as you're going around the corners, you'll notice that the little snips will really help you um, take it round a corner. Okay, so that'll do. And you'll be able to see that it'll open up. It'll open up. It just fits nicely on a circle or on a, um, an oval as we're doing now. So, right sides together, again, we, I, I've got the most ridiculous fabric for you to see the mark, but I know where it is, it's there. And like I said, if you want to, just get that crease in there and you'll see it quite easily. You can see it on camera anyway. So right sides together, and I'm going to start in the centre back. So, like that. There we go. I'm going to start here and I'm going to come around the front and I'm going to stop stitching about an inch or so away from the end of my where my short edge is. So I'm, I'm going to have to do it and then show you because I haven't got a camera angle to show you. So just just out of interest, let's go back to the front camera and um, I'll, I'll stitch it. So you've really got to kind of trust me here, guys, that this works. <laughs> um, so I'm stitching from the back of your body. Um, and I'm coming towards the front, okay? And those little clips are gonna, those little clips that we did, snips, are gonna take me around the corner. I think there's a picture, yeah. Um, picture one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Start stitching from the back center point to one inch from the center, front center. Um, you can see the clip marks. So we're gonna just start going around. Now with the stabilizer, you'll find that it's not, you haven't got any bias, basically, assuming you've, uh, you've ironed it well. <laughs> um, and an iron-on stabilizer is brilliant. Um, make sure your raw edges are touching. You don't want to have any gaps between your raw edges. You want those raw edges to be absolutely on top of each other because this has been measured exactly, let's hope. <laughs> I am jo I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Put a lot of time into it, really. Um, and big thanks to Kath, who keeps me in check with proofreading. So I'm going to transfer my mark that I made on the back to the front. It's hard to see, but I, I, can, I can see it. And you should have a good, well, it's gonna be possibly more than a quarter of an inch. Depends on your stitching, guys. So let me just take you to the side camera and show you what I've done. So I've stitched, look, from the back to the front and I've left, so you can see there's my center mark for the front and I've left all of that. I haven't gone right up to that edge and there's a reason why, okay, there's a reason why. So I'm now going to stitch, and I always stitch um, the straight side onto a curve. So I'm actually going to start stitching from the center back, and I'm gonna come round to the front. Sorry, I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna start stitching from the front, and I'm gonna come round to the back. Now, some of this you could do 
um, from the, the straight side, from this side. So you, you've got a good fighting chance that when you bring it round, it's gonna fit beautifully, okay? But, um, so we'll do a little bit from, from there on the oval, but not much. Um, it's, sometimes it's quite handy. And because the straight edge has the, the clips in, then it's not as easy to maneuver. So I know you can't see, I'm gonna take you back to the front, just, by, just bear with me. Um, there we go, that's better. So I'm gonna do just a little bit and that's, that's all I'm going to do. Now you could, obviously you could pin all this within an inch of its life. But what I don't want you to do is to join the, that front seam together because depending on your stitching will depend whether it will fit, serious. So let's have a look. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to take my, this long new edge, if you like, about a quarter of an inch over past that front marker, okay? And the pictures are quite clear on, I think they're pretty clear on, and the explanation, explanation is pretty clear on the pattern. So let's just start there. So I'm gonna take it about a quarter of an inch beyond that point, and I'm gonna start stitching about an inch away. So let me just show you what I mean. So this is, means this is a little bit challenging for you because it's something that's slightly different. So there's my front, there's my marker there for my front, and this is the new long piece that I'm bringing round. So I want you to see that it's a quarter of an inch beyond that mark, okay? But I'm gonna start stitching about here, okay? And so I end up with something that looks like that. Okay, so that's, that's what we'll do. So just let me get my inch and then I'll take you back to the front camera just for five minutes. Let me, I've got some smoothed again. I'm gonna get a pin on it in a second. That's it. And you know me, I don't do pins. So drastic times. Right, I've got my needle down now. So let's, uh, oh, I hadn't, I hadn't transferred you. That's fine. Or perhaps you didn't see a thing. Who knows? <laughs> Not turned your camera. Oh, let's, let's do that bit again. <laughs> oh, hurrah, hurrah. <laughs> right. So, so this is the long bit that we're going to stitch on now. This is the front marker here. Look there. I'm going to take my short edge about a quarter of an inch beyond that front marker there. That, so it's about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to start stitching an inch away from it. So you'll have two bits that look like that. Okay, right. <laughs> just to just to make sure you uh, you know what's going on. So just get it under your needle. Try not to move it. Obviously, put a pin in if you uh, if you want to. Okay, one little back stitch just to hold it, and then we're going to work it in. So it's the same thing again. We're going to work our way around. When you do the lining, it's a lot easier because it's not stabilized um, and it just goes together far easier. So don't worry about all, any of this, okay? Please don't worry. And then I'm just coming around to almost where I started. So let's do that. There we go. Keep the needle down if you can. Let's bring it round. And the, the only thing with curves and all this sort of thing and bags and all this is that you end up with quite a bit of um, bulk that you're having to move all the time. But it's, it's only a piece of fabric, so um, it, it's not going to do you any harm, <laughs> okay? So flatten this all out and then just come around. There we go. So now I've attached my my pieces together and we've got this big gap here do you see we've got this big gap so what i want you to do is to bring the two short ends together let me do this on the side camera because it obviously it's going to be easier let's remember to actually move the camera across this time um, and so this is how it looks okay so you've got that base on and then all you're going to do is to pinch the sides the, the two short edges together and you're going to make it fit that area, okay? So whatever that seam allowance is here for your short edges, it's gonna fit that gap, all right? So all I want you to do now is to stitch that up. This is the outer piece, so we don't need a turning gap or anything. 
So once you've pinched it and it's lying flat like that, okay, we're going to stitch up the little short edges together. And then I'm going to finish stitching my circle. I hope that makes sense. So let's just get that in there. So like I said, pinch it together. Obviously you might want to pin it. And pop it under the machine. I might have moved that. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, put it under the machine and just machine up. Okay. And then if you want to, and I think I did this in the, in the picture. I'm just having a look. You can open that seam up. And then all we're going to do is close that gap. Now, if you want to, just make it into a tube and just stitch it to the base like you normally would. But I quite like this method of putting it together. I find it more accurate and less stressful. So now I've stitched my gap closed and I've got my main body part done. OK, let's have, shall we turn it through and have a little look? And I find because this is a small little make, it doesn't need any wadding really, but you could do and you could quilt it and make it absolutely gorgeous. You know, like we did Poppy. Yeah, you can do that. So there we go. So that is now ready for our lining. Now our lining is, uh, we've got a pocket. Okay, there's our little pocket. So the first thing we're going to do is turn it over a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch again. I'm not going to iron it and I'm going to top stitch. And that'll be the neat end um, edge of our pocket, the top edge of our pocket. So you're just going all the way across like that. So it's just a top stitch. So it's just I've just gone all the way across. And then what I'm going to do is something. Well, you'll see. I think you see in the pattern. Yeah, you do. I didn't think I hadn't included it. Trouble is, I like to keep the patterns fairly simple because we can cover most things on the on the Facebook, on the live, on the YouTube as well. So let's just move you over so you can see what I'm up to. And um, I also want to show you um, how we're going to put use the quilters tape again. So for the lady that hadn't seen quilters tape, this is your moment to uh, to have a little look see. Um, <laughs> right, I'm going to iron my lining piece um, in half so I get my center point. There we go. So I've got a nice center crease. Okay, it's an easy, easy way to line everything up. I'm going to do the same with my pocket. Now a lot of this will, will be, I will iron out in a second, but as long as I've got most of that crease in, then I've got a, a line to marry up with, with the other piece. So I'm just going to fold over a quarter of an inch, thereabouts, don't want you to measure it, on all of three sides. Okay, so it's just a quarter inch. I'll do both ends and then I'll do the bottom. And this is where quilter's tape is once again your friend. You just, you know, it's crazy. And I, I was filming a video this afternoon and I said, the person who invented quilter's tape actually needs to have a medal. Uh, you know, apart from all the other people that should have a medal. And there, obviously there's tons. So what I've done, guys and gals, is... I have attached my pocket. Now you can hardly see it because I've got lovely dotty fabric and I've actually used my quilter's tape on the back of my pocket, just on the three sides. Let me try and hold it so you can see it. So I've used quilter's tape um, down here, down here, across here and up there. And I started to stitch that when I realised you hadn't seen that bit. So all I've done is stuck it down. Now it will come off. Look, let me show you. It will come off. It's just a temporary hold. You can see the dots of the glue there. And all I've done is placed it onto my fabric like that. It's a temporary hold. It's not permanent, but it keeps it there ready for when I want to stitch. And, and you can also see that central line. I've, I've put the pocket on the center line um, of the bag or the storage pod back. OK, so. Um, so that should be that should be okay for you. All right. 
So hopefully we're okay. But we've we've got the um, you know we we're talking about the the technology, and I don't want to talk about it too much because it's just not appropriate. But what would what I do with John is I'll get him to edit it all together. Let's just go back to the front. Go back to the front. Um, <laughs> I'll get him to edit it together so it's, it makes sense because it will be on it will be all on YouTube I do believe so I'm just stitching around the three sides of the pocket okay so I've gone oh you can hardly see it because <laughs> it's dotty so I've gone from the top edges here down across the bottom and up. So my pocket is attached, but we want to stitch up the center. So you've got two little pockets. Now, if you didn't stitch up the stent, if you didn't stitch up the center, this little pocket will, will um, fall forward. It will flop. OK, because it's only a little pouch or pod, really. Um, so really, you need to attach that. Now, you've already hopefully you folded this in half and you've got yourself a nice crease line. Um, like I say, I, I can never choose the right fabric to, for you to see. But if I was to um, let's just go back to this side, we'll see if we can see it. Right. Can you see? Ah, yes, you can just about look. There's the, there's the crease line in my my body bag. <laughs> and then there's the crease line here of my pocket. And all we want to do is just do a stitch line right down the center of that. In fact, you stay there. I'll stitch it and then I'll show you. Do a couple of little back stitches just to hold it and make it strong. That's it and then you're coming down. You could start from the bottom and go up and then you won't get a little crease here. Sometimes that happens. So I'm following literally the line that I made with my iron. That's all I've done. It's really easy. So let me show you. Can you see what that looks like? So a couple of little back stitches, top and bottom. And you've secured that pocket and now you've got two little pockets okay which is much better for a little storage pod of this size okay so we're, we're we're good to go we're good to go now with this one all i want you to do because this is the lining we can jiggle this around a little bit we're just going to stitch the two short ends together okay i'm going to stitch the two short ends together now if you decided with your outer fabric to do the fold here and if you're not if you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, look back a little bit earlier on the video because you might not want the seam there. It doesn't matter with the lining. OK, it does not matter. You ain't going to see it. In fact, where is where is my Peggy? Here she is. So look, it's tucked right inside and we've got the turning gap in there anyway. So, you know, in fact, we've got to remember to do that, haven't we, guys? Put the turning gap in. Oh, my gosh. Right. So. <laughs> keep you on that camera just for a bit oh we're back up to 300 again oh that's better <laughs> i'm thinking where's everybody gone was my stitching so bad that everybody's disappeared <laughs> so I'm, i've stitched about an inch you can see look that i've stitched about an inch and i'm going to hop across and i'm going to stitch about an inch here okay so i'm hopping across Lift your, lift your um, presser foot up and you're obviously your needle up and then you're just hopping across. OK, little back stitch because that's where we're going to turn everything through. Little back stitch just to secure and then just snip that. Those oh, I just snipped into my lining. Can you believe that? Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. So I've just. <laughs> Actually, I could put a little bit of um, H250 on that. I wonder if I've got some handy. Just bear with. I might have a little scrap. Just bear with. Oh, you know, when you need a little scrap and there isn't any. I'll just, I'm rootling around in my bin, guys. No, I haven't got any. Tiny little scrap. Mind you, that it's ever so small, so perhaps I'm not bothered. I usually have a load on my desk. No, no matter. Don't matter, I can also do it after. Um, yes, so 
<laughs> so I've stitched an inch, I've stitched an inch. It's not going, it's not going so well tonight, is it? And then, then we're going to stitch right sides together with our oval, but we do need to find the center back still, okay? We do need to find that. We want that oval to sit perfectly in our shape. So we're going to give ourselves a crease on the back, okay? Let's get that so you can see it and put a crease on the back. <laughs> I'll get it so you can see it in a minute. Um, so I've done myself a crease there, okay? And then with my oval, I'm going to fold that in half and I'm actually going to crease it all the way along. It's only my lining and I, I can always um, take it out if I want to, you know, take the crease out if I want to. So that has given me a definite front and back. Um, let me just turn that iron down a bit. So you can see, oh, I mean, that's just gorgeous, isn't it? So front, back, back, front, whichever you like, but it's not, this is not the front and back. These are the sides, it's an oval. And when you look at the base, see how it looks? It's an oval, okay? Um, if you want to do it the other way, of course you can, but let's do it the way the pattern says. So with the crease on the back looking like that on your oval, you're going to put the crease of the lining, and we're gonna to have to get the oval inside there, that crease of that lining, let's see if you can see it, yeah, that's going to go on the crease of your, your oval. Okay, you're gonna match them up. So if I do it this way, right sides together, and my creases are going to line up. I don't know if we can see that. Um, but anyway, you're, you're matching your creases up basically. And you're just gonna start stitching, okay? Now you could start stitching from the front, you can start stitching from the back, but as long as you stitch, start stitching wherever the folds are that you've made, the creases, okay? Because that's really important. Now you don't need to snip your lining, um, but you do need to stitch, oops, you do need to stitch it. Let me just turn this through. Yep. So you need you need to still stitch it with the straight edge onto your oval. Okay. So my oval is now underneath. Okay. There's my oval, and that's underneath. And my straight edge is. Let me do it so it makes sense. I did attach a little bit so I didn't have to keep wriggling it. So it looks like that. Okay. So you've got your oval at the back and you've got your straight edge of your body on top and please stitch that way. It's far easier to stitch that way than any other way. Um, you can do it the other way but I think you'll struggle. You'll struggle more so why, why make it difficult? Um, <laughs> So I'll keep you on that side camera for a moment. Um, I'll get ready to come back to the front. Um, so now I'm going to take this around and you just, you just kind of let it do what it wants to do. You do not want to stretch your oval. Your oval is on the bias, okay, at the end certainly. So you do not want to stretch it, otherwise your body piece will not fit it. Okay, so just keep moving your fabric so it's not pleating. Um, it is just the lining, but we still want it to look nice. And even though the first one, when we did the, the outer, we snipped into it, you don't have to snip the lining. You just want to be careful that you don't stretch the oval, okay? Because like I said, it's on the bias. So just keep bringing it around, keep moving this outer bag, and that way you won't get any little pleats. And so we're just coming around the corner now. I'm just going to move that so it's better for me. And it's, it always looks more complicated than it is. But all we're doing is stitching the straight to the curve. Okay, we're just stitching the straight to the curve. Nothing complicated about it. And now with any luck, when you come round to the front, you'll have your crease mark there and your seam sitting on top of it. Okay, if it's either side of it, then you can adjust how you're stitching from where it's sitting. But that looks pretty, pretty perfect to me. So we're just gonna carry on. You can open that seam up if you like. Let's do that before we get to it. So I've opened my seam. So my seam is now 
flat. Let me just show you if I can get my nail in there. There we go. So that's nice and flat. Do you see how that's looking? And then we're just going to come round. So, another exciting evening. <laughs> oh dear. So let's, uh, I'll tell you what, let me go to the front because it's a little bit more interesting. And then we can, uh, we can have a chat for a minute. <sighs> Hopefully you've taken advantage of the glorious weather today. If you're in the UK, you definitely would have been enjoying the uh, this gorgeous weather we've had. Um, tomorrow is going to be nice as well. Um, by the weekend, it's going to be freezing again. You think, how does that work? So I'm just coming round to where I started. And we're just, I'm just making sure all my raw edges are sitting nicely on top of each other. And we're just bringing it round. Oops. Nearly went off kilter a bit there. There we go. We're on the straight run. Little back stitch and we're done. <clears throat> so don't forget that you've put your turning gap in the front of your lining there. Can you see? It's only a little turning gap. It's only a little pouch, isn't it? A little pod. So there's our lining made. So now what we want to do is right sides together. Now we've already got our little handle clipped in the right place. So that's that's correct where that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my lining up to match that. So I'm going to pop my outer, which is right sides out, into the lining and then our right sides will be together. Just find the middle. Where is it? There. And I'm going to use my clip to hold all those layers together and then I can just pop that inside. There we go. Now in the picture it shows that um, I think I've, I've used a clip um, about three or four, yeah, four different places just to hold everything in place. So your two front seams can be opened up and can be clipped together. And you can start from there if you want, so you know that those two seams are sitting on top of each other nicely. That's up to you. You might have decided to put that seam at the back. Think about, think about that. It's just the outer. I wouldn't do the lining because you'll see that seam um, on the back of your pouch. So where is, where is it? I keep putting it back. So if you put the seam in the back of the lining, you'll see it there, won't you? Oh, that might not bother you, but it's just another thought, isn't it, of what you can do. So let's pop her there just for a minute. And then you're just going to get those clips in, just make sure it all fits nicely, bring it all around. You're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way. <laughs> Oh dear, there we go. I'm not going to put any more clips in, that's plenty. And don't forget, these sides are a bit stretchy as well because they're on the curve. So if you need to adjust it slightly, you'll probably get away with just easing it. Or in uh, another word, um, stretching it. Um, so we'll start from the front. If you've got a free arm now, take the free arm, the, take the table off to get the free arm because this is much easier. With this Juki, I don't have a free arm but it doesn't stop me. So just a quick reminder then, the Making It Monday patterns are available on my website. They're never anywhere else. They're always on my website, lizzycurtis.com. If you go and have a look in the shop, do the drop down from the shop and you will always find the MIM patterns, M-I-M patterns um, in there. It's the first it's the first tab underneath the shop. Well, when you first go in, it's quite it's quite amusing, really. If your if the uh, the menu is too far down your page, so it's sort of down here somewhere. When you do the drop down, it doesn't. It, well, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't go up. You just get a shortened version of it. That's all, that's what I've seen. So if you bring that bar up to more at the top, when you do the drop down, you see everything. There's about twenty categories, I I guess. I don't know, I haven't counted them. And then you'll see all of the patterns there, if, if you want to see all of the patterns. So, 
let's get this on now also don't forget um, I've got pattern of the month at the moment and I've put the April one on there and that's um, Augie and Augie is a fabulous um, hat which so many people made last year it's incredible um, modeled by my eldest daughter Adrienne so you might as well just have a look at the front page and see see my daughter so you've got we're going across the top now and now I'm coming down the side so you should have about a quarter inch either side of that and uh, yeah so go and have a look go and have a look it's really good I'm really pleased so so yeah so you'll find the patterns there and um, yeah, like I said, they're there, it's there for you for free for five days. And then from Tuesday night, they go up in price to one pound, which is not very much. Not very much at all. There we go. So just coming back to where I started. There we go. Oops. There we are. So, so I've joined them together. I've got my loop tucked inside there and I've attached it fingers crossed it's all okay you never know until you turn through I'm sure it's fine but now you're going to turn it through this tiny little gap and it's times like this and I think why did I do it so small <laughs> but it is a small seam isn't it but I suppose if you put it in the back it'd be bigger but then you'll have the pocket mm, okay it's just a thought think it through I just kind of give you the basics and then I, I just expect you just to take it on board and try your own thing. Why not? Why not? Be brave. I've seen so many Making It Monday patterns. And I think all told, we've had about 14,000 downloads. So for those people that I get messages so many times to say, I can't find your Making It Monday pattern. Or it won't allow me to download or whatever. I know technology can be frustrating. Hey, we've experienced it this evening, haven't we? But the patterns are there. You just have to have a little look-see. Um, yeah, why would I hide them from you? No point. <laughs> so there's our turning gap there, and I'm going to be really good, and I'm going to stitch that now. Just tuck my little raw ends in. See if I can get it neat. And we'll use the cream thread. You could obviously, you can use matching thread hey that'll be revolutionary <laughs> or oh, I don't know what else you can do I was doing this earlier you can glue it <coughs> just get some fabric glue oh I didn't didn't have any ends there little snips there there we go you can glue it now did I top stitch her oh yeah I did top stitch oh yes I did because it's in the pattern isn't it so we might want to get the the yarn on this so we've got a lovely edge so I'm just tucking my lining in and just bringing that up. It's not much to see really, is there? Because we're trying to get it straight. Um, and once it's, you've got all your seams out really well, give it a little ro roll in with your fingers just to get those seams out and um, get your fingers so they're damp. Have a little um, damp sponge nearby. And just pop your fingers into the sponge. I'd lick it, but you're watching. And then uh, you can just roll it out. And you can iron that if you want to as well. And if you've got um, a, a ham, H-A-M, it's a tailor's ham, you could get that in there and press your, your seams open beautifully there. Okay. I think I'm just going to go for it as it is. I'm just going to trust. Now, again... Uh, oh, someone's talking about hemming web. Yeah, I mean, you could. You could use hemming web. Um, it's just because uh, quilter's tape is kind of already pre-made to, to do that sort of job. And it washes away. Uh, maybe, maybe you want to do that. So, think. oh, that's what I was going to say. When you top stitch, nearly forgot, start top stitching from underneath this handle and there's a reason for that because if you didn't and you got to the handle you'd have to break your threads so just move that handle just slightly out of the way just put it to one side and top stitch from there okay i knew there was something i had to tell you so pop it under your needle move the handle 
and start top stitching from there. It's a lot, lot easier because you'd have to break your threads because you couldn't go through the tunnel, could you, if you think about it. So we're just top stitching all the way around. Now, I, I would really like it if you pressed yours. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, give it, a, give it an iron so it's beautifully neat. And it just makes a difference. And I'm always saying to you, aren't I? To press everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, coming round to the front, over that front seam. And then up the other side and hopefully it's okay because I like I say I haven't pressed it I should do I should do what I say or do what I ask you to do but this is to, for making it Monday this is a little bit more complicated than normal I was quite conscious of that because I want the making it Mondays to be a nice easy projects and I know a lot of people will find this a, a, an easy project so look we're coming up to the tab again can you see it on my screen coming up to the tab and again I'm just going to push it out of the way so my machine can go almost underneath the bridge and then I come back on myself one or two little back stitches it's, it's not a um, structural stitch, so it doesn't need to have, you know, lots of backwards and forwarding. It just doesn't need it. It's a top stitch. But we do want to sort of neaten it off. Right, so there we are. So that is our little Peggy that needs a bit of an iron. <laughs> needs a bit of an iron. <laughs> and she's got the pockets there, look. It's, it's hard to see. But she's got little pockets just there. So she'll take all your stuff. I think she's great, really lovely. Oh, I've got a knot. Let me just get rid of that. There we go. So let's have a quick look on the, the side. There we go. So there, there we are. So I just need to give it an iron, as I keep saying. Um, and that's her done. And she's got the two little pockets here. So I get my scissors, you can see. One there and one there. You can see what that looks like. And there we are, she's ready to go. Ready to store your bits and bobs in. And just isn't that fabric just too ridiculously lovely? And it's got the handle on it. It's a bit like a teapot handle, isn't it? Sits there really nicely. Yep. So that is making it Monday for this week. And I think you've probably enjoyed it, apart from the, uh, the interference of the, uh, the technology, which is fine. We can get over that, can't we, guys? And I'll get my John to do the editing and then you'll get a whole video. <laughs> so it'll be fine. So a quick, a quick recap, OK, a quick recap. And I'm sorry this week's been a bit complicated. Quick recap. The Making It Monday always launches on a Friday at lunchtime, okay? Roundabout, depending on what I'm doing, depending where I am. But it always launches pretty much midday on a Friday. And I always announce it first in the Making It Monday Facebook group. So everybody there knows that it's, it's launched and it's there for everybody, okay? And I put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in the shop. So there's plenty and it's just a download. So if you put free in the promo code, you get it for free for five days. Simple as that. After the Tuesday midnight, it's then a pound, which is $1.60 in the US. So it's not too bad anyway. We're now on project 20. So we've got 19 other little projects that you can download and, and start playing with. And post the pictures in the Making It Monday group. I'd really love to see them. I, all, I, see, I try and see every single one. And I always admire them and think how clever you all are to make them. And also your enthusiasm. Sometimes we see lots and lots and lots made up. And, and I'm, I'm really happy about that. And then I get to see what's worked for you and what you've used it for and where it's going to go and who's going to receive it and what you've put inside it. <clears throat> 
And I've seen some of the clover bowls. My clover bowl is just here, look, with my, my um, clips in. I've seen some of those made up and filled with Easter eggs, and that's been lovely. And of course, don't forget, it's Easter this weekend, which will be great. Somebody can give me a bowl of chocolate any time they like. Um, so, yeah, so that's about it. Um, don't forget you have to don't download the pattern within 30 days, otherwise it disappears off the face of the earth. Um, and it says that quite clearly on the email confirmation that you get and also on the front page of my face, um, my website. <clears throat> don't don't forget also that all the Making It Monday videos are in the video tutorial section on the website as well. So if you can't find them on Facebook, they will always be on the website either today or tomorrow in this case because of the editing we need to do and um, so that's that's about it really that I think I've covered everything um, and just to say that um, if you do um, post anything in the making it Monday group it can only be a MIM project it can't be anything else so if you've made the most glorious bag or the most glorious dress or something absolutely gorgeous like a table runner or a quilt, I'm afraid we have to delete it because the rules say it can only be a MIM project and that keeps it nice and neat. There's lots of other lovely places you can post your super duper makes and I would be very happy to see them in lots of other places. So I appreciate that. So there we are. So that's all I have to say. Did it in other how have they done that? But it's all beautiful buttons. It's double sided. So if I turn it round, there's an, there's two layers of buttons, and you just literally thread it through with invisible thread. So I'm just trying to keep it off my microphone. Um, so yeah, and I, I wear that fair bit. I, I found it tonight, which I haven't seen for ages. Anyway, I've got to go because I've taken you way past your hour and I don't want to keep you. And it's been absolutely super seeing you. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you once again, to enjoy your company. And I hope that you enjoy making little Peggy. All right. So night night, everybody. Night night. <laughs>